Uh, SMU quarterback commit Keelan Russell was at Ole Miss this weekend uh, for his official visit, um, talking with sources uh, around his recruitment and, and some folks at Ole Miss. Um, weekend went well. Top 100 prospect uh, committed to SMU who rolled through Oxford for another visit. Uh, he is very familiar with the program. He had the Rebels as a finalist when SMU – uh, landed his commitment in September, but I don't get the sense that Ole Miss is the team that SMU needs to be really keeping an eye on here. He did add an offer from Alabama uh, on Sunday. The Crimson Tide came through and evaluated him and and were able to uh, extend an offer, or I think he actually picked up the offer earlier in the, uh, uh, I guess, late last week, maybe. It could be wrong, but um, you know, the Crimson Tide did jump in to the race. He's going to officially visit there at the end of May. He's also got that Florida official visit still lined up. And then, of course, he comes to SMU on May 17th. So this recruitment is kind of entering potentially a final stretch here between SMU and Keelan Russell. And SMU is going to do everything it can to keep him and and show him why <clears throat> he's such a priority for SMU's long-term future. You know, SMU, even though they landed Preston Stone a few years ago now, I mean, they haven't landed a guy like Keelan Russell, a guy whose stock is skyrocketing entering the summer before his senior year, a guy who uh, can truly do it all, who has won state championships on the highest level, who has late offers, from programs around the country that are among the best at landing top quarterback prospects, I'll add. It's going to be very interesting to see how this one plays out. And uh, if you don't subscribe to the On3 National YouTube channel, do that now. Uh, but Josh Newberg had, had me on. He's our national recruiting uh, video guy. And, and Josh has been around the business for a long, long time. Um, and, and we'll have Josh on at some point because I do want to talk a little bit about FSU, Miami. He's been in the thick of the ACC world um, and covered the Seminoles uh, for a long time. But uh, he had me on our national channel, and he's had Steve Wiltfong on our national channel and some of these other guys. And the thing about this quarterback position and, and, and the dominoes around the country is, you know, what's true today might not be true tomorrow. Like Josh had me on today, and I'll spoil – Part of the video for you guys he said well do you think he sticks or do you think he flips and i said i think he sticks right now the reason why is look we don't and you can kind of expand on this but all these quarterback recruiting battles have context and caveats and what ifs and dominoes that need to fall in some cases in order for them to happen when you have keelan russell and you talk about keelan russell and a and M, for example, or you talk about Keelan Russell and Texas, well, they need to lose quarterback commitments to end up with Keelan Russell. I don't think he wants to be a part of a true quarterback class. Texas A&M is not taking a second quarterback. Texas is kicking the tires on it, but doesn't really seem keen on it. You know, Keelan Russell is a guy who's really peaking in terms of confidence right now. He is an awesome kid. He is very complimentary of all these programs that recruit him. But when you look at where this recruitment's at, I'm not as worried about Ole Miss. I know Lane Kiffin, Portal King, all those things, high-flying offense. He's developed quarterbacks. Great. I just don't think he ends up at Ole Miss. He's already picked over them once. I think he's going to stick with SMU over Ole Miss. When you look at Florida, Okay, how did the Gators sell where the program is? You've got DJ Lagway in there, five-star quarterback. Could he be the savior for Billy Napier? Sure. But Billy Napier is also very much on the hot seat entering this year. But nonetheless, if you're Keelan Russell and you do flip to them, well, you could be looking for a new coach come December. That would make things interesting. It's the farthest school away for Keelan in terms of what's, of who's really in the mix. You know, Oregon is another one. But again, the Ducks want two quarterbacks, but would Keelan go all the way out there? And I know Rashad Samples is out there, but I just don't see him being a part of a two-quarterback class. 
And then you get to the Alabama offer. And I'll share this. I think one thing that Keelan, when it comes to time to make a decision, his final decision, I should say, I think one thing he's going to weigh is if he has the opportunity to commit to an Alabama and Texas is do I want to play or how badly do I want to play in front of a hundred thousand people in the SEC? And I think that's an, it's a tough question because you go to a lot of those programs and yes, and at SMU, you're going to play eventually at a Florida state or a Clemson and uh, you're going to play at Louisville and you're going to play some of some great venues, but a hundred thousand people in the SEC week in week out is, is eye catching for recruits. And so for Keelan, in particular with Alabama, with Texas, I think there's much deeper ties. He's in state, it's flagship, all those things. But with Alabama, the staff just offered you. Obviously, they had success with Michael Penix at Washington. But how are you going to weigh going out of state all the way over there to a new era of Alabama football and weighing playing in front of that, you know, that crowd for that storied program? Versus you've got relationships at SMU, you'd be a hometown hero, you could see, you know, yourself being a starting quarterback at SMU pretty early on, quite frankly. And then on top of it, SMU hasn't played the NIL card yet. And I think they're going to play it and they're going to play it heavily when it does come time for Keelan Russell to have those types of conversations. And I think it's going to have a pretty big impact on his recruitment in the end. When you're a top 100 prospect and you're top 10 quarterback, you're going to command a certain amount of NIL. And I think he's sitting in a position where he deserves it. And so there's context to all of these conversations around quarterbacks. And it doesn't mean that, oh, well, SMU is only keeping him because Texas is, uh, you know, got a quarterback commit, committed. Look, he's visited Texas multiple times. It, I think if he really dialed them up and said, hey, I want to be a part of Texas, want to commit, I think they would take his commitment. I really do. Yeah, and, and look, maybe that happens. Maybe maybe he does want to be a part of a two-quarterback class. But don't count out SMU here because there's he's got some people in his corner that are very much about him staying home in Dallas. They see a path where eventually Kevin Jennings is the guy to hand the torch to Keelan Russell. And – potentially early enough in his career that that's appealing. And Rhett Lashley and his staff have shown that if you're good enough, we'll play you. And I don't, and I think that's the case this fall with Kevin Jennings and Preston Stone. If Kevin comes into fall camp and absolutely balls out neck and neck with Preston, maybe there is a change made. But there's all these different things with, with Keelan's recruitment and quarterback dominoes around the country that while SMU has done a very good job and continues to do a very, very good job recruiting Keelan Russell, it might not work out, but it doesn't mean that, you know, all would be lost. You know, they can go out and use that money to acquire great players through the transfer portal. They can go out and flip a 2025 commit. SMU has been quietly keeping in touch with other guys in the 2025 class and they've not extended an offer. We've not seen that happen because it hasn't been necessary. But look, they've hung on. I from all the coverage, I would have thought Keelan Russell would have decommitted two months ago, but he hasn't. He's been back for the spring game. He's going to be back for his official visit. The staff's going to try to buckle down and make this a a place that he has to really say no to. And the fact that he's committed is a big deal. I think if he was uncommitted. I think it'd be a little bit more open, be a harder sell. But I think the fact that he's committed and he's got some teammates, he's got some close friends, he's got some people in SMU's corner. 